Hello everyone, welcome to the last Sunday in February. I'm Colin Receiver, and today I wanna to talk about the cost of consumer service, good and bad. Stay tuned. Here at Smartbox, we don't sell any kind of phone training or, or customer service or internal consulting. We leave that to our good friends over at Summit. But I can tell you how important a role customer service plays in getting you more patience, more profits, and more freedom. I can't tell you the number of times that a client has called me complaining that his marketing isn't working. But you know, when you really jump in and look at the numbers, he's getting dozens, even scores of phone calls a month than he was before. The problem isn't with attracting the patients for the doctor. The problem is scheduling and retaining the patients. You know, it doesn't matter how big your front door is if your back door is wide open. So let's look at what good and bad customer service really cost you. What's the bottom line of it? First, how much is each patient worth to you? You can figure this by looking at your gross monthly income divided by the number of patients seen. So let's say this number is 1,500. Now, what does it cost you to attract each new patient? Calculate the cost of advertising and marketing per month. And don't forget to add in employee time for following up with those leads, for posting stuff on social media, for doing everything that is involved with your patient attraction system. Now, divide by your number of new patients per month. Okay, hopefully this number is less than 1,500, but even if it's not, you can still be making money. Here's why. There is minimal cost to providing great customer service. Now, sure, you might have those massage chairs or soothing music, but those costs are really negligible over time. So keeping your patients is far cheaper than gaining new ones. And every person an existing patient refers further reduces your cost. You know, make sure you're looking at not only the, you know, the primary person coming in, but the secondary referrals, the tertiary referrals, et cetera, so on and so forth. So we've established that keeping an existing patient has a tremendously better ROI than attracting new clients. What are you going to do to make sure your dental practice retains all of your patients? Are you putting in as much effort to retain patients as you do to attract them? Now, that seems somewhat simplistic, but you must attract new patients if you want to meet your financial and personal goals. The point of attracting new patients is to convert them into patients that are going to stay, pay, and refer. Our industry-leading patient attraction system can deliver you 100 or more new calls per month, but if you can't get the appointment scheduled and convert the prospect into a satisfied patient, it's not doing you a lot of good. Come back tomorrow and we're going to start a series of podcasts based on the feedback I got from two of our podcasts last year. Until then, keep moving forward.